Hello everyone and welcome to another internet radio review and this time it's for the majority Peter House. So if that sort of thing interests you, keep watching. Now in my last video, which was for the Oldcastle IR100 review, I said I was shooting two videos simultaneously. This is that other video and it's a review of the majority Peter House internet radio which has the additional ability to play music from USB and Universal Plug and Play stroke DLNA. But unlike the IR100, the Peter House doesn't have Spotify Connect and it also emits something else, which I'll tell you about later. But in the meantime, I wonder if you could guess what that might be. I also want to clear something up at this stage. Majority have two Peter House radios on the market. This is the Peter House, which is mono, but there is also a Peter House Graduate, which is larger, has stereo speakers, and a few more features. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on with the review. As with the Oak Castle review, we'll start with what's in the box. And also, like the previous review, it's not going to take long, because apart from the radio, you get the instruction book and a power supply, and that's it. As I said previously, that the IR100 had a strange looking power supply and in the Peter House they use exactly the same type, although this one generates 12 volts and so powering it from a USB battery pack is not an option with this. The device itself is more substantial than the IR100. It's heavier at over one and a half kilograms and it's larger in all of the dimensions and definitely a substantial tabletop radio rather than a portable. Now the construction is obviously MDF uh, on the top, bottom and sides, and these also have a wood effect print which is reasonably convincing from a distance, but not so much when you're close up. The back and the front are both plastic, but the front does look like it could be metal. Sadly, it's definitely not. Finally, there is a base port on the bottom of the radio, and I definitely think in this case it will make a difference to the sound, but we'll find that out when we perform the audio test at the end. Now let's flip to the reverse of the Peter House, and going from left to right you'll find an on-off switch, which does kill the power to the device, as opposed to the on-off button on the front, which just puts the device in standby mode. The DC power socket is next, and this accepts the barrel plug attached to the power supply. The line-out socket is after that, which is a standard 3.5mm jack, but there is no headphone socket. Following on from that is the auxiliary input, which again is a 3.5mm jack, and I will need to utilise this later on for reasons that will become clear. And finally you have a USB socket, which you can use for playing music files. Now I can't find out what format of files it will play, but I assume that like the IR100 it will probably play MP3, WMA, WAV, FLAC, EAC Plus formats, and it will also charge devices, but again, this only gives out half an amp, so anything you're charging will be very slow. Now, like all internet radios, when you first power them on, they need to be connected to the internet, and as the Peter House doesn't have an Ethernet port, I'll be using a wireless connection. As always, if a device I'm reviewing has WPS option to configure the networking, I'll always choose this. When I tried this on the IR100, WPS repeatedly failed, but with the Peter House, WPS worked the very first time, so it was a breeze to set up. The software and the main operational hardware is from a Taiwanese company called Magic Systech, and it's also branded as Media U. So once powered on for the first time, we can see the icons match the corporate look and feel. It's the same as the Oak Castle. So the configuration will be the same as the IR100, and I'll go through some different options in this review than I did in the last one, just so I'm not repeating myself. Now, I'm not going to look through all of the options here, I just want to give you an overview of what you can and cannot change, and I'll delve deeper into the areas which have more configurability. 22 options on the IR100, 20 on the Peter House. So the first option we'll look at is the time display. This is purely for the look of the clock on the standby screen, and it switches between an analog or digital display. The timer is the next thing we look at, and it's just a timer that counts down from 99 hours and 99 minutes, and that's it. The sleep timer is next, and you set the time here at which the radio will turn off in X minutes from now. The internet radio option here uh, allows you to configure the sound quality and the buffer length. This is fairly useful if you don't have a particularly great internet connection. 
and the final option is the playback setup. This is used as a default value when playing tracks from USB or media server for things like repeating all tracks, repeating one track or a random shuffle. Now when I got to this stage in the Oak Castle review, I gave everyone what I called a public service announcement. I said that the radio was purely an internet radio and that it did not have any facility for FM or DAB reception. I also stated that all of the stations you would expect to see broadcasting on DAB are bundled under the separate section behind the internet radio icon. It will therefore be of no surprise that it's absolutely the same on the Pete House. It's completely and entirely an internet radio, so in terms of comparison on that level, the Pete House and the IR100 are identical. However, the next part of the review covers Bluetooth connectivity, and this is where the Oak Castle walks all over the Peter House. Why? Well, because it doesn't have Bluetooth. That's right, majority in their infinite wisdom have not included any Bluetooth of any form in the Peter House. I know, that is amazing, right? I mean, what an absolute bizarre design decision. It also puts me in a strange position of having to buy a cable and plug it in the auxiliary in socket on the back when I come to test out the audio later. Anyway, let's just pass over this oversight and consider other ways of playing music. Now with a lack of Bluetooth you only really have the two options of playing locally stored music through the Peter House, and that is playing music back from USB sticks or a USB hard drive or on a local media server. To access these files you'll need to choose the Media Center option from the menu and then you'll see a submenu with four options and we'll concentrate on the first two. You choose USB if you have files on anything connected via USB. I have a couple of tracks from the YouTube Music Library here just to show you how they will be displayed when they're playing back. It does show album art in full colour when the track is playing but the album art does sometimes take a while to appear. For music and other files located on a media server, we need to choose the UPnP option from the submenu. And the navigation is pretty much the same as for USB, except we have classifications for artist, album, genre, etc. But they all come from the server and are not generated from the Peter House. If you see two files here, it's because I have multiple albums featuring the same music, so they come up twice. Now, if you've got this far into the review, you'll probably be wanting some payback, right? Well, the payback in this case is to give you the part of the review that you thought you were going to see in the first place. How does the internet radio functionality work? Well, your patience has paid off. To get to the internet radio functionality, you'll need to choose that option from the menu. Once there, you'll have another submenu with five items. My favourite is a list of all of your pre-saved stations so that you can recall your favourites from here. You don't add stations in here though, and I'll show you how to do that later. 
The second option is the radio station music option, and I'll also come back to that one later as well. Sleep Radio is next. This is a list of ambient sounds and music uh, to help you get to sleep. There are different bird sounds, there are waves crashing on the shore, rain lashing on the roof, and even some white noise. They're pretty useful on occasions, again, but they are ultimately just preset favourites. History is the penultimate option here. It's a list of the last played stations. No shock there. And service is a way of adding new stations to the database, although one I can't vouch for as I've not tried it. Now we'll go back to the radio station music option. Uh, this is the place where you'll find all of your internet stations. And again, you have another menu, but you can search for your stations by genre and by country. Now, I haven't a clue what the other options are for. They seem to have some classification that the manufacturer thought might be useful. Probably the most popular stations and some editorially chosen stations. But all in all, I really don't have a clue. Anyway, I'm not going to take you through all of that and how to search for stations. But I will show you how to store them. Because I always get asked this. To store your station, you choose your station. and you long press the fav button. You find an empty location using the jog wheel and then click it once to store that station. And it's as simple as that. If you press fav later on, you can retrieve that station. Right, now we've come to the bit we've all been waiting for. The time when we test out the sound, which after all is what a radio is for. As always, to perform this test, I'll be using my Zoom H1N recorder on a little tripod to try and capture the sound as if you were listening to it with your own ears. Obviously, I need you to hear the best representation of the sound coming out of the speakers, as I can give, because that's how most people will experience the output from this device. The recordings that you will hear will be some classical music, an electronic-based dance track from the YouTube sound library, a piano piece, and then some speech radio. Now, at various points, I will change the volume to give you a better understanding of the range of sound that will come out of the device. And whenever I do that, I'll put the caption on the screen. Also, it's become fairly obvious to me, even before I do the audio test, that this device will perform much better than the Oak Castle. It's heavier, it appears to have a better amp and speaker, and it's been driven at 12 rather than 5 volts. And with all of that out of the way, here is the Majority Peterhouse.
being interviewed by free press outside the country. So many people reject any interview with BBC Persian or any such media organization that is not connected to the regime, not because they don't want to speak, because somebody is going to call them right after the interview and it's going to be a problem for them. So we don't have access. It's very difficult to hear and reflect their voices in our programs. We are very lucky that we are living in the age of social media. We can see something and we are connected to people on that medium. But apart from that, it's difficult. Even if you're inside the country covering election like this and covering Islamic Republic's politic is a very challenging task because Islamic Republic is not a democratic government. It's not transparent. There is no freedom of speech. And even in terms of the policy making, all of the lobbying, everything works behind the closed door all the time. On top of that, we are here in London, mm. you know, so much speculations all the time. So that is the majority Peter House, along with the Ocastle IO100. They are what I feel to be the most similar internet radios under the majority umbrella, and they couldn't be more different. The IO100 had all of the functionality, but the audio was weak and lacked bass. But the Peter House has none of the functionality, but all of the sound. Am I being unfair? Well, I don't think so, but let's start with the positives. The Peter House is not a portable. It's much too heavy for that, and that weight is put to good use. It has a good amplifier and a speaker, and so the volume can be turned up to a level which is uncomfortable. So that at least gives you options, and it has a considerable bottom end, which the Oak Castle didn't have. In fact, I think that its default bass setting is too much, which can make the sound a bit muddy, so you may want to tweak the EQ settings to get a sound you like. But now, the negatives, and... There are many. Firstly, it doesn't have FM or DAB functionality, it doesn't have Spotify Connect, and more importantly, it doesn't have Bluetooth. So in order to hear the benefit of that pretty good speaker, you can either use the radio, obviously, or you'll have to play music back from USB, a music streaming server, or via cable. Yes, it is 2021, and we have to play things back via a piece of wire. That is amazing. However, seeing all of that, if you do want to purchase the Peter House, I'd strongly advise that you try and source a certified refurbished version from eBay. It's how I got mine, and if you purchase it via that method, then it could give you some really good value for money. Now, I'd like to end this video with a bit of a plea. And I don't do this very often. Hopefully, you will have enjoyed this video and the other videos on the channel. But here's the rub. Every radio I review, I have to purchase with my own money. I get no freebies or review devices or anything like that, so if you see something on this channel, it's mine. Now, obviously, this gets a bit expensive and somewhat limits me in what I can review. But here's where you can help. YouTube only allows their creators to earn revenue from their videos when they get to a thousand subscribers, and at the moment, I need a few more. So if you could press that big red subscribe button, that would be a huge, huge help, and I'll be really grateful. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with a new video.